So you've created a beautiful 3D object, something like a bench or a giant strange potato chip, and you want to 3D print it. The easiest way to do that is to take your model. Now, in this case, I've got a Revit model, and I need to get it into SketchUp for easier printing. And I can't export it directly from the conceptual massing environment where I created this. So I have to load it into a project and any blank project will do. I have that over here. I've already created it. Here's my beautiful potato chip in that overall project. And then I can export it from here. When you do, Re uh, Revit is kind of literal in when you export something. It, it wants to export everything. So you do have to hide absolutely anything you don't want to see. In this case, I'm going to hide these levels. Just select them and right click on them choose hide and view elements. I believe there's a keyboard shortcut for that too, if you prefer. Now I just have my element. Now we aren't going to be dealing with materials in this particular assignment, so don't worry about painting the object in any way. Uh, we're just going to export it. Now just go to File, Export, and we'll use a CAD format. DWG is the AutoCAD native file format, and that's the one we'll use to to export. Uh, we don't even need AutoCAD on the computer. We just need the AutoCAD file format as a kind of transfer. Now, when you go to the export menu, uh, there are a few options. Um, first of all, it just makes sure that you are seeing what you want to export. Make sure that there's no random stuff in there. Uh, go and choose a location for the file. Um, and choose a file format that's the oldest file format you can get. In this case, my version of Revit, it's 2007 DWG. Uh, this just kind of assures that there are, uh, I don't know, no problems that will arise based on kind of newer file formats that sometimes don't import well into SketchUp. So anyway, click OK, and it will save the file. Now, here in SketchUp, we have uh, just a blank architectural template model, and we're going to import the model that we just exported. And just go to the File Import menu, and be sure to find the object that you created. Uh, and here is my wiggly bench. Now, there are some options when you import these things. Um, first of all, we don't need materials. Uh, but we do want to have the faces oriented consistently, and we want to merge coplanar faces. Now, sometimes I will check this Preserve Drawing Origin button if I know where the origin was in the model, but I, I wasn't totally paying attention, so I'll let SketchUp figure out how to orient the model. Anyway, click OK and Import. It will give you a message saying, oh, look what I found, here's what I found, and OK. And here's your, here's your object. There is a scale figure here in the default uh, kind of Revit, uh, sorry, SketchUp template, um, which helps you to size your object. If, if it's um, you know, not the right size, you can, of course, modify it. We are in SketchUp, and so things can be modified. So you can use your, your scale tools to um, you know, change the size or shape. Um, it's fully editable. Um, if you want to make any changes to this object, it's in a group, so you, you will have to either double click on it to edit the group, or I usually just explode it. I also get rid of this scale figure because we don't want to have that in our 3D print. Now, sometimes what you'll find is that there are holes in your model, but they're hard to see sometimes. Like this, I can tell it's a different color, but it's hard to kind of figure out. So. What we'll do, we'll turn on Hidden Geometry. Just go to the View menu and choose Hidden Geometry. And you see how now we can start to get a little sense of depth. And yes, indeed, there is a hole in this model. So how do you get rid of the hole? Well, first of all, let's explode this um, group so that I can have access to all the objects here. And I'm going to reselect just to make sure I get everything. First of all, I'm going to right click on the object and unhide everything. This makes the lines solid, just makes them a little easier to see. What you can do, uh, it, because it's a SketchUp object, you can draw in these little triangles to try to fill in the holes that exist in your model. And sometimes it takes quite a few. And remember, you are drawing in 3D, so make sure you're getting a point that is where you, where you think it is. 
uh, in space. And there we go, we have it. Now, one problem with printing 3D models is they're very sensitive to the direction of the face. Um, it's called the normal. And what we want to do, we want to make all these faces face the same direction. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select everything, either using a window, like so. You could also triple, triple click on, an, uh, on the object here, um, and that gets uh, everything that is uh, selected. And let's make all the material the same um, in these objects. So I'm going to my Entity Info dialog box here, which shows up uh, in the default tray on the Windows version of SketchUp. Uh, on the Mac version, you have to kind of open it up separately. And you can, you can pick a color. So if I just choose, uh, say, brown, it will make everything brown. But uh, let's, let's not do brown. This one here, the upper left color, is the default color. Uh, and that's kind of like what color things are when they're not painted. Now, the reason I like this is you see how it has two different colors here. One's the sort of inside face and one's the outside face. So it makes it really easy to see which direction the faces are facing. I select an individual face, not a whole, the whole kit and caboodle, just one face. Right click on it and choose Orient Faces. And what this will do, this will make absolutely sure that every face all the way around the project, and this includes underneath, right? I haven't really checked underneath. Make sure that there are no holes. And the reason you don't want holes is the 3D printer has an issue with holes. It just, it just can't print them. Now that I've fixed all the holes, at least the ones that I can find, I've changed the material, what I can do is export the model as an OBJ file type. So in SketchUp, just go to the File pull-down menu, Export, and make sure you choose 3D model. Now, there are a couple of options here. First of all, choosing the type of file that you export uh, is important. SketchUp will be able to export an OBJ file or an STL file. Either of those can be read by our 3D printer, um, but I think I prefer OBJ files. They just seem a little more reliable somehow. So choose OBJ file and obviously give it a name. There are some options when you export. First of all, as before, we don't need texture maps because we aren't dealing with any, anything that needs texture. We don't, um, we're not going to be printing materials. Um, we also uh, don't need to worry about edges or two-sided faces, but we do want SketchUp to triangulate all faces. And this is very important uh, when you are exporting a, a Revit model, so something that's very organic. Um, SketchUp needs to kind of interpolate that when it creates the OBJ file. Uh, if you created a model in SketchUp, then you obviously don't need to worry about this quite so much because SketchUp has already done that for you. Anyway, I uh, usually choose inches for the model. It doesn't really make a difference um, because when we get it into the MakerBot software, we probably aren't going to be printing to scale just because we, we size it based on time, not on um, actual scale. Anyway, click OK and then export. If you get the error message like this, something minor is messed in, up in your model, you can fix it now. Uh, often, what happens is it has to do with the consistency of the faces. You know, maybe a face needs one extra triangulation. So anyway, uh, it has exported successfully. So now it's time to work in MakerBot Print. That's the 3D printing software that we use. Um, I have already told MakerBot Print the name of my printer. Um, which is the Replicator Z18. Uh, if I were on campus and connected to the same campus network that the MakerBot is, I'd be able to actually see a, a kind of video of what's going on on the MakerBot, which is, which is fun. You get to see kind of your progress. And all the desktop computers will have that feature. Now, uh, to import our lovely OBJ file, we just go to the file pull down menu and choose insert file. Browse to find your export, which is right here, and choose open. And there it is. Okay. We have um, a pretty good, pretty good rendition here of the image. Now in the MakerBot software, your scroll wheel zooms you in and out. Right uh, clicking and dragging your right mouse button 
orbits the view, clicking and dragging your left mouse button on the object will move it. Okay. Now, for reference, this is a 12 inch by 12 inch square build plate. And if I zoom out here a little bit, it's 18 inches high. Okay. So just that gives you a reference as to how big this object is. Now I can click on the object and uh, going over here to the MakerBot menu, I can click on the scale button and uh, it will tell me, I guess the default units are millimeters, but if I wanna make it a little bigger, I can just type in some kind of percentage, hit enter, and it will resize it. Okay, you can also tell it scale to max, but we often have problems printing right up to the edge of the MakerBot build plate, so I wouldn't recommend that. Now there's other options here. If you choose Orient, it's the next one up, you can uh, rotate the model just by either clicking these buttons and it will flip it around. The next button is Arrange, and you can arrange the build plate. And this is especially handy if you have multiple models, but even in our case, if I click on that button, it will center the object. And this is awfully uh, handy because uh, we kind of have the best luck of printing the uh, models when it's on the center of the build plate. So finally, uh, we can go to the print settings here. Um, by default, the print mode is what's called balanced mode. Um, if I click on those three dots, you'll see there's draft mode and mini fill. Um, if your model is going to take too long to print, you can choose like mini fill. That will speed it up quite a bit. Not, not a huge amount, but a bit. Um, the other thing is you do want to have supports. So right now it says none. I'm going to choose breakaway support. You need this supports because under these kind of overhangs here, the 3D printer won't be able to print those. It can't start printing in kind of space. It needs little supports um, which will hold up the model while it lays down layers of plastic. Uh, finally, um, there is a uh, model info. I guess this is where we could change it to the scale of the original model. Again, because we're not printing this to an actual architectural scale, we don't need to worry about it. But if, if you were trying to print something to architectural scale, this is how you would do it. Now, uh, let's find out how long this is gonna take to print. You just click on the Estimates and Print Preview button. And what you see here is the preview of the printing process of the model. The green is the actual model, and the yellow, or whatever that is, orangish yellow, is uh, the supports. And these are going to be easy to break off uh, once the model is completed. So uh, finally, you can tell it to show you the travel moves, the actual moves that the uh, object, the 3D printer, the extruder will make, uh, but we don't, we don't really need any of that. So to exit the preview, you just tap escape and you're back to normal view. Um, and now we can save this model file, save project. I'll just put that on my desktop. And that's a file which you can bring to the print lab monitor and they can fix it for you uh, or they can print it for you. You'll just have to make sure that you give them enough time. When we did the print preview, uh, it said about uh, two and a half hours, I believe. And that is plenty of time to uh, print our model. Now, if you think it's too small, you can make it a little larger uh, and assuming that you don't go over the kind of four to six hour mark. Six hours is really the maximum that we're going to want to use. Now, what if your model still has holes in it? You'd be able to see the holes here in the preview. In fact, they often cast kind of disconcerting shadows uh, on the ground. Well, if fixing it in SketchUp didn't work, there are other options, um, but none of them are easy. Uh, we could try exporting from Revit into 3ds Max. Um, that often exports a cleaner model. And then 3ds Max can export an OBJ file. Uh, but I don't have 3ds Max on my computer. It just doesn't run on a laptop particularly well. Um, it's on the desktop computers. You could also go to another program and this program is called NetFab. It's from our friends at Autodesk. And on this software, you can, you can get it for free like our other Autodesk software. So this software, as you can see, is a kind of a similar interface to the 3D printer interface. There's a, a kind of build plate. And you could even configure this to have the uh, MakerBot Z18 
interface. But we well, for now this is this is fine. We just want to add our um, object and, and fix it. So it, it really works very simply. Click the Add Part button browse for your object and you can see here it actually has a very nice uh, kind of preview that you can you can see the object and you might even be able to see if there's any holes in it um, and then uh, just click open and there are a couple of basic options uh, when you import it the big one is uh, tell it to stitch all this will fix uh, any broken lines, basically, and this automatic part repair um, that almost always gets all the problems. And uh, so this default repair uh, option will will absolutely clean it right up. Uh, there is an extended repair for objects that are full of a lot of holes and other issues. Anyway, you choose add parts and it will stick it on the build plate or somewhere near the build plate. Um, and you can use this gizmo here to move the object. You could even scale it if you so chose. Um, it doesn't really matter just so long as it's somewhere in the build plate that this uh, program sees. And then uh, you just export it from NetFab file. And in this case, I'm going to export as an STL file. There is an a OBJ option here, but I have had some problems with that particular one. I don't, don't know quite what the problem is. It must be a, just a file format. Just choose STL and it will automatically check the file quality to make sure it's okay and click okay and that file you can import into your MakerBot software uh, and print away you can also in theory if you have your own MakerBot at home you can print there there are also online services where you can load your model and just pay somebody to print it and they'll even just mail it to you obviously we have MakerBots in our on our campus that we can use and they don't cost anything but if you're in an office and you don't feel like buying a MakerBot and dealing with the maintenance and support those are terrific services and they're very easy once your model is repaired you can just click send and you're good to go for us uh, please take your MakerBot file and upload it to canvas so that I have a copy, but you'll also have to contact the 3D Print Lab monitor and schedule a time to get it printed.